Let's go! Welcome everybody to part 13 of Doki Doki Love and Literature. If this is somehow your first time tuning in to the Let's Play the playthrough, definitely click down below on my channel name. Click the video tabs, watch the other videos, get caught up to date. But, if you are here and you want just a little summary real quick, I believe we just got told by Monica that we have to pick between Sayori or Natsuki on who we want to work with to prepare for the festival coming up. We got a little too crazy, a little too nervous, so we said, hold up, we gotta go to the bathroom, calm our nerves a little bit. So here we are, and let's see how we handle this. I shoved the bathroom door open with my shoulder, the door clanging on the door stopper. Since it was after school hours, the place was naturally deserted. I could hear the soft gurgling of water rushing through the pipes in the walls. I paced around the sinks, loudly tapping my foot in agitation. This is a disaster, I kept repeating in my head. How the hell am I supposed to pick? If I chose Siori, I'm losing an entire day I could use to get to know Natsuki better and to get close with her. So there's your answer right there, my friend. Choose Natsuki. Oh, but if we don't choose Siori, she's gonna be sad, girl. Well, guess what? We gotta choose the choice that's gonna benefit us, okay? The world doesn't revolve around Natsuki. Guess what? It revolves around us. You wanna know why? Because we're the main character. The freaking main character. So, of course, it revolves around us. You ever think about how you're the main character of your own life? You ever think that you are actually the main character in the entire world? Maybe, maybe not. Sounds a little ludicrous. I don't know, maybe not. If I pick Natsuki, I may make Siori feel unwanted and maybe even hurt her feelings. The same can be said for Natsuki anyway. We're really only losing if we don't pick Natsuki. Natsuki will also feel unwanted and maybe hurt. Natsuki has been alone in the club room, talking to no one. We even thought that she was ostracized from maybe the group chats, maybe from eating lunch with the Doki girls. Turns out that was a misunderstanding. But I mean, Natsuki's very alone, more than Siori. Of course, we know Siori, but like still, I mean, we're not supposed to know that. We gotta choose Natsuki, man. It's obvious. There's no way to really win here. Well, yeah, I mean, we gotta choose still. I turned on the tap in the sink and the thin stream of cool water gushed out. I dove my hands under the stream and rubbed my face, the cool water dripping down my chin. I cut my hands and took a sip, filtered and pure. Dude, I, I don't know about you, I, I, I'm not necessarily saying that I grew up in like a shoddy type of school system or neighborhood, but I would not use one of the school sinks to drink water out of. I use the water fountain, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of these clean freaks, one of these germaphobes. I know some of those motherfuckers, they're like, on the water fountain, that's fine, okay? I understand. Sometimes you gotta take the L, but the sink? I don't know, man, I don't trust the water in there. Now that I'm thinking about it, though, nobody's going to on the sinks over there, so maybe, just maybe, they are a little bit safer. Who's to say? Uh, maybe maybe the, the guy that can actually measure the water and the safety and the bacteria, maybe he's the guy that could say, me? Absolutely not. I glanced up in the mirror and noticed how disheveled my hair had became. I quickly combed it back into shape with my damp fingers. I ripped a few paper towels from the dispenser and patted my face dry. Come on, you're freaking out over literally nothing. Okay, bro, we're, we're, they're actually total... You have total right to freak out in this situation. <laughs> all you have to do is pick between them. Oh, okay, we're, we're trying to hype ourselves up. Dude, all, all you gotta do is pick. Let's go. We gotta get out there, champ. Come on, we're, we're spending too much time in here. Let's just, let's just feed ourselves a facade of lies. Just go with Natsuki and try to figure out what's going on with Siori later. Maybe try and go talk to her Saturday? That sounds like a good idea, at least. I tossed the paper towels in the waste bin and took another look in the mirror. I straightened up my pose and tried to look more confident. Relaxed. I freaked out over nothing and ended up embarrassing myself. Christ, I really need to... I heard a knock on the door. Ra, are you in there? Do not tell me the Doki girls are knocking for me. Monica. Oh, God. The worst. I gently opened the door. Uh, is this Uni 6 or what's going on here, kids? 
Oh, okay, we, we came in. Okay. Maruka stood outside. Rar, is everything all right? You seem upset. A shadow of worry was cast on her face. I shook my head. Uh, no, everything's fine. Just... Constipated. I awkwardly laughed. <laughs> Jesus, did I really just say that? When I got shifted on her feet. Why do they keep saying they shifted on their feet? Every every time, dude. Everyone's shifting on their goddamn feet. How many times you gotta shift on your feet? Oh, I see. A pause. Do you need more time, or...? She seemed to back off a bit. I hastily shake my head now. Oh, uh, no, I'm fine now. Thanks. Thank you. No worries. I smile and try to push the awkwardness of the situation away. Great. Shall we go back? I nodded enthusiastically. She turned on her heel and started to walk back to the class, myself uh, warily following. When we returned, Siori and Natsuki were busy talking to each other, though I couldn't hear what they were saying. Siori glanced up and gave me a worried expression. Are you okay, Rar? She hopped off her spot, but I put up a defensive hand. I'm fine, I just need to use the restroom. Reclusively, she sat back down. Reclusively? I guess you can use that. It seems kind of weird, though. I immediately felt bad. I wasn't trying to be rude. Yes, well, where were we now? When I sat down on the teacher's chair. Rar, uh, who do you want to work with this weekend? I glanced at Natsuki. She blushed and looked back down at her parfait girl's volume, book shut with the cover facing up. I glanced at Siori looking down at her white shoes tapping against the desk. She looked up and gave me a genuine smile. I feel myself starting to lock up again. Fucking hell, say something, my mind barks. Well, I adjust my collar, gears turning. I always wanted to give baking a try. That is, if you're okay with it, Natsuki. Natsuki perks up, a smile breaking across her face. She nods. Yeah, whatever. You can come help me get the supplies I need. Suri looks indifferent, a smile persisting on her face. So. I'm sorry, Siori, okay? I know it's tough for you. I know it's hard. I know! I, j I don't want to be the bad guy here, okay? What was she thinking? All right, that settles it then. Monica swiftly pulls out her phone stylus and starts to scribble notes down. I coughed. <clears throat> uh, sorry, Siori. I just... It's fine, Rar. Don't worry, my job's really boring anyway. I wouldn't want to make you unhappy. <laughs> She smiled. I return the smile, but my mind sticks to the last part. I wouldn't want to make you unhappy. Even if Siori's task was as, as exciting as watching paint dry, I'd have fun anyway because I'd be with her. She's my best friend. She... she knows that, right? Should I say something, try to affirm that? I pause. No, she certainly knows that. That she doesn't bore me. That she's, always, that she's always made me happy, and I've done the same. That should be enough. Monica claps her hands together. All right, everyone. Even though we're one member short today, I'd still like everyone to share their poems. Then tomorrow, Yuri will return, and we'll get working on our tasks. Monica reached into her bag. I'm especially proud of this one. Okay, thank God, dude. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think this is new, actually. Possibly? Uh, wait, this is by Siori. Wait, what? This, this is Siori. It, it really felt like, uh, Monica was sharing with us, but okay. Uh, Flowers by Siori. The petals drip down into a dark puddle. Splashes of the color swirling in my eyes. I collect them and hold them all close. Their sweet smell entrancing me. The smell fades. The petals dry out and crumble. I walk back to the floor. Only there's no more color. The flowers have died. Only the lingering smell of death remains. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Siri, wanna explain that one? I think it has, uh, I think analyzing this, it has something to do with, uh, oh, you're really depressed and wanna kill yourself. Ooh, yeah. That's a tough one, huh? Rar? Mm hmm? I glance up from Siri's paper. What did you think? I pause. It's very, uh... Well, it's not exactly what I expected you to write. It's a tad dark, don't you think? Yeah. She drew circles on the desk with her finger. 
I wanted to uh, try something different. Yori's poem was sort of similar to this, and I wanted to try to make my own version of that. Uh, well, it certainly got across a lot of emotions. It's very, uh, weighty. <laughs> Thank you. You could say the same about your poem, Rar. It had a lot of emotions driving to it. Driving it too. <laughs> Thanks. I stood up. Thanks for sharing. Suri just smiled. <sighs> you hate to see it, folks. You do hate to see it. You hate to see it every time. You know, you never want to wish, you know, uh, bad things to happen upon anyone. At least I don't. I mean, Siori. Baby, I, I want you to be happy. I do. Monica was sitting down at the teacher's desk, tapping away at her small laptop. Behind her on the whiteboard, I could see a couple of equations and assorted numbers scrawled with a green marker. I was wondering what she was working on. She glanced up and immediately shut her laptop. Oh, hey, sorry. I was just working on some coding for class. She gestured at the scrawlings on the board. That's... that's what it was. <laughs> I shared the laugh. Hey, it's cool. It looks pretty complicated. She sighed and pushed her laptop aside. It really is. Our instructor is making us write out our own little program as a final grade before break, and it's driving me nuts. If I flop with this, it could ruin my grade. I see. Well, hopefully you can get it all figured out. Then again, what's someone like you have to worry about? I'm sure you'll create something better than anyone else in the class could. Monica looked up at me. It was pretty emerald to eyes shining. Thank you, Rar. That means a lot. You do have a way to make a girl feel a certain way, huh? I, I don't really think it's a good, good way. She laughed and I blushed. Anyways, poems. Monica hands her paper to me. Hiroshima by Monica. My breathing is shallow. The air is too thin. People are screaming. I think they might win. My vision is blurry. My heart rate is slow. No therapy can save me. From what I've seen, what happened? It's all nuclear. I like that one. That was pretty strong. Nice custom poem. I like it. I don't know if the person actually wrote it themselves, but I thought it was pretty good. Ruka's statement earlier was right. She should be proud of this one. It was from what I gathered a portrayal of a victim in the Hiroshima nuclear bombing in 1945. Staggering around a ruined city, blinded and dying. Yeah, but the true meaning is that, uh, oh yeah, that's exactly how your girl Monica feels. Uh, knowing, but also not knowing what happens to them in their home. 70 years later, it's still a touchy subject, but Monica captured its essence perfectly. Wow, that was moving. I wasn't expecting something like this. You captured the emotions of that day very well. Thank you. She went silent for a moment. I didn't really enjoy writing it, but I felt inspired by doing some research of the bombings in my history class. Just seemed... Just something I felt should be written. So I took the chance, uh, this being one of our last poems to share. An awkward silence. She pointed to my paper. Hopefully yours as in, isn't as uh, depressing. <laughs> I handed my paper. She quickly started reading it, uh, her eyes going across each line. After a while, she shook up. Spoke up. Do you mind if I say something about it? I shrugged. Sure, I'm open to criticism. It's not criticism, but... She leaned in slightly, her voice quieter. It's a love poem, right? I blushed again. I could feel myself start to sweat. What? I, I laughed awkwardly. What makes you say that? Rika smiled. Don't worry, Rar. I won't spill your secret, but you did make it kind of obvious with your word usage. <laughs> That's the point! It's very cute, though. It's a clever way to admit how you feel about me. Or <laughs> how you feel to me. I freeze. Uh-huh. What a good burst it out laughing, her ribbon in her hair bouncing slightly. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Rar. I couldn't help but join in the laugh. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Well, thank you for that. I took my paper back. Monica gave me a, uh, a laughing smile, but it didn't help with putting me at ease. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm liking these little, little, little baby custom uh, faces. Pretty nice. 
One thought troubled me. Actually, is that Natsuki smile? I think it is. I see, see a little, uh, little snaggle tooth there. Uh, if she, no, nah, I can't stop thinking about it. Fuck. It's, 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 uh, Siortsuki. It's your Suki combined the two together. Why, Monica? This is uh, this is the the clickbait uh, title thumbnail, by the way. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos where people uh, combine two people together and uh, they make it their thumbnail. Let's go. Cool. Not saying I'm actually gonna do it, but maybe we will. <laughs> Who knows? It's a, it's a wild, wild west out here in the Doki mods. Um. If she doesn't think I wrote for her, who does she think I wrote it for? I turned around. Every time, dude. It's, 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 it goes black for just a little too long every time. Practically hopping, I walked over to Natsuki's usual spot, tucked away in the back corner desk. She was once again nose deep in Parfait Girls, her eyes intently reading the pages. Atop her desk was the manga book set from the closet. Hey. I feel like I'm getting pretty good at reading text f faster now from just doing this mod because it's so uh, descriptive in, in, in its word usage. She glanced up from her Parfait Girls volume. H hey. I pointed down to the desk in front of hers. Mind if I sit here? Well, of course not, dummy. What are you going to do? Just stand there all day? Oh, of course, dummy. I chuckled, setting my bag down on the floor. Is that the next volume I was supposed to read? I point to the book in her hands. Y yeah So? I was just rereading it. I smiled. Cool, I do that sometimes, especially when it's a good series. Better than just letting it sit and collect dust on the shelf. Asuki looked up, uh, gently putting the volume down. Y you have a collection? She seemed surprised. Yeah, complete editions. I have it tucked away above my desk. It's only a couple of my favorite series that I've read over the years, though. It's probably not as big as your collection. She glanced away. Uh, actually, Parfait Girls is the only physical collection I have. W what Why? It's kind of a surprise she doesn't actually own her own series. Not that I'm making fun of her, but it's usually what people um, do. Physical over digital. Who cares? Mind your own business. Annoyance laced in her voice. All right, all right. A pause. Hey, also... She paused, adjusting the Parfait Girls volume. I need to give you my number so we can start planning for Sunday. I nodded. Yeah, sure, no problem. I quickly pulled out my phone and opened my contacts. Uh, what is it? She slowly rattled off her number to me, waiting for me to finish and putting the digits. You're not gonna give me her actual number? Come on, dude, we need it. I added her to my phone. Don't make me regret it. I laughed. Don't worry. <clears throat> I ran my finger along the edge of the desk. My mind wandered back to this morning and how I got to finish the Parfait Girls volume just barely before the first bell. I dug in my bag and qu quickly pulled out the volume, holding it up to her. So, uh, anyway, since we've already shared poems, do you want to get back to Parfait Girls? Her eyes lit up. Oh, yeah. She swooped up the manga book set and stood up from her desk. She made a motion with her head to follow her, walking towards an empty spot against the wall, next to the closet door. Oh, never mind. We, we're we not getting the CG scene yet. Or, not not CG. Um, What is it called? Whatever. Um, She brushed off the spot on the ground and placed the book set there. She sat down and patted the spot next to her, beckoning me to join her. I bent down on one knee and took a spot next to her. There's the Natsuki we know and love. Running her fingers along the bindings of the volumes, she slipped the previous book back into its holder and handed me hers. She grabbed the next volume and opened it up, immediately starting to read. I looked up. Surya was sitting in a chair under the window by the teacher's desk, where Monica was facing the whiteboard, scribbling new equations onto the board. I opened up my volume and began to read. Hello. She, 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 sleepy girl. Sleepy girl. My heart pounding in my chest. She was right there. Asuki's head was resting on my shoulder, body pushed up against mine. I don't think we've ever gotten this close in Doki Doki Literature Club before. God damn. 
She sat with her legs tucked into her chest. Sl sunlight gleamed through the windows, reflecting in her hair, giving her an almost angelic glow. I thumbed in the next page, taking it in uh, intricately drawn art. Credit to whoever wrote this. The style is very cute. Almost reminds me of a cross between typical 1990s Sailor Moon styles and a more chibi pop team epic. Really? Pop team epic? Okay, sure. Interesting blend that works really well. Yeah, this is a very interesting blend, to be honest. I can smell her on me. Dude, all of a sudden we're getting a lot of thumbnail ideas now. <laughs> I almost wish I ended earlier. There, there, there are so many things that we can make for the thumbnail and title now. It was such a vibrant and dizzying scent. Like strawberries and what I imagined rainbows would smell like. Call me a creep, but it's about how I expected her to smell like. So pleasant. <laughs> I continue to read. At this part of the story, one of the girls has a crush on a boy who works at the sweet shop at the mall. And the other three girls are following her around on her date with the boy and... Without moving my head, I glanced over to Natsuki. She had her own volume opened up on her lap, but she wasn't reading it. She was intently looking over at my own volume, unmoving. I cleared my throat. Y you okay, Natsuki? She seemed startled. She clutched the edge of her own volume. Uh, yeah, what's up? She pushed back a strand of her pink hair behind her hair. Here. I shook my head. Nothing. It just seemed like you were more interested in my volume than your own. Well, it's just- oh my god, she's so cute. Well, well it, it's just- I- I mean, th that's a good part. I just wanted to see your reaction. That's all. What's wrong with that? <laughs> so cute. I toned my voice. Uh, hey, nothing's wrong. I do the same thing when I'm introducing my friend to a new series. I'm curious as to how they're gonna react to some of my favorite parts. I nudged her on the shoulder. You're fine. She blushed and turned away. Th thanks Rar. I adjusted myself in my spot. Don't mention it. I looked up and almost froze. Through the rows and rows of desks, Yori was silently watching me. What the heck? Not like buggy eyes or anything, but just silently watching me from her desk. An almost dead stare, unsmiling. Oh my God, dude, this is fucked. Again, so many titles possible for this video. Out of instinct, I waved. She took a second before she waved back, almost excitedly. Smile spread across her face before she looked down at her phone, now distracted. Slowly, I returned to the manga. Alright, that was... kind of weird. How long was she looking at me, I wonder? Probably not long, a couple seconds. I wonder what she thinks of me and Natsuki being so close together. Is she threatened? There's no real reason to be. I shake those thoughts away. Back to Parfait Girls. You can think all about that later. And with that, we will end the episode here. I know it's not perfect, but it's getting real long already. We're, we're on a solid about to be 24 minutes here. So I don't want to make the video drone out too long. So we will stop here. Uh, we did have a little tr scene transition. Natsuki's probably going to like officially confess her love to us. Like literally next text or something. There, there, there's something about to happen here. So we'll end here. We'll wait for it for next time. Thank you for watching and tuning in today, though, boys and girls, men and women, people of all uh, genders and those that are non-conforming as well. You do you. Thank you so much for coming by and watching, though, today. I will say, if you have not liked and subscribed, definitely do that. And also, I leave, I leave stream. I live stream on Twitch every day besides Monday. So feel free to go down in the description below and check out my Twitch channel if you want more content from me. If this ain't enough, you know? Because uh, there's hours of content on there every day. But uh, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully I'll see all of you next episode. And take care and have a damn good one.